morning. Jesus offers us a new commandment that we should love one another. And it is in this that we love one another that the world will know which God we worship and serve. So come, let us love one another and worship God who has loved us so much in Jesus Christ. Welcome to this time of worship, the Wallace Presbyterian Church. It's good to be with you today as we gather here in the name of our Lord. Please take time to sign the friendship pad and be sure to greet one another and make each other feel welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you remember what you were doing at 11 o'clock Friday night? I'd forgotten how great it was to go when the hot sign is on at Krispy Kreme. <laughs> we had lock-in here Friday night with our confirmation class, and we went to a concert at Fort City Community Church in Wilmington, and it was about a three-hour concert, and all the proceeds benefited the New Hanover Regional Medical Foundation, and it provides money for cancer patients and families who have financial needs, and it was a really exciting concert. It was really loud, and that's not just me saying it. Uh, everybody in the car said it was really loud, but then we went to Krispy Kreme and got donuts and had a good time and came back here and Zach and Christy Johnson and I were here that night and then Sunday, Saturday morning some parents provided a great breakfast and the folks in our confirmation class painted the stoles that they're going to be presented on confirmation day and we had a good time. I had a good time. I hope, I hope y'all had a good time. I just had an email from Pat Barrow from Jerusalem. He and Cindy had been on a trip uh, with Union Presbyterian Seminary in the Holy Land, and he said, greetings from old Jerusalem near the Jaffa Gate, which is a famous gate in Jerusalem. And I also want to let you know, uh, in addition to the announcements that are in the bulletin, that this afternoon, um, the session and some others uh, folks in the congregation are going to be here for some pastoral care training um, so that they can assist Reverend Cynthia Williams when I'm on sabbatical. And the session is committed to doing that, and some other members of the congregation said they were interested. So they're going to be, we're going to be talking about home visits and hospital visits and just what it means to care for one another in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to let you know that that's part of the plan and that that's taking place. It's wonderful to be here with you. Today is a special day in our church as we receive some new members, and we will do that following the service. Let us worship, following the sermon, let us worship God. Please join me in reading the opening sentences. Beloved, we are called to love one another because love is from God. God's love is poured in us from our birth. We are called to extend the love of God to all people. God's love is taught to us through the witness of God's faithful people. We are called to proclaim God's love in all that we say and do, in all creation, in all our relationships. May God's love be made known. Amen. Our first hymn is number 396. Brethren, we have met to worship.
Brothers and sisters, Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We come before God this morning aware that we have fallen short of what God desires of us. We have not loved God with all our heart, soul, and mind. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. So let us come before God, confess where we have failed, and seek God's forgiveness. I invite you to join me in the unison prayer, silent prayers, and the assurance of pardon. Let us pray. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped up in our own concerns. We have gone along with evil, with pride, quarreling, and divisiveness. Holy God, help us to face up to ourselves so that as you move toward us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, receive mercy, and in turn, show mercy and love to one another. Lord, hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear the good news. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us sing God's praises for his mercy in our lives. to invite the children to join me on the steps for the children's sermon. to get a magazine in the mail every month. Yeah, something what that you read. Well, this one was for children. And in fact, it still gets published. It's still written. It's called Highlights Magazine. And I loved getting Highlights Magazine because it had stories and puzzles and jokes and I would read it from one end to the other. I always liked getting highlights. And one of the yeah. best things about Highlight Magazine was they had these things called, something called a rebus. Have you ever heard of a rebus? It's a picture puzzle or a picture story. And you could read it and it would have pictures that helped you read the story. So I brought some pictures today. I want to see if y'all can figure out. I did, Hattie B. Okay, you want to see it? All right. I want to see if y'all can figure out what this is. Y'all look at Okay, what do you think it says? I, 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 I love. I love sheep. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I love sheep. I made this really hard. I love sheep. I love sheep. Another word for a mama sheep? No, is a you. A you. So, I love you. Or you could do a. I want to see a pizza. I want to see a pizza. Or you could do a sheep. 
loves I. Sheep loves I. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna look at the next one. Ooh. How about this? I love you. That's right. How about that's the heart means love. How about this one? Jesus loves you. Yeah. Well, you could do the same thing that Jesus loves sheep. Jesus loves sheep. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. How about this? Ooh, I, I love God. I love God, or I love Jesus. That's right. I love Jesus. This one's a little harder. You ready? I love uh, it doesn't say I. What's the first the heart say? Love. Love one another. JJ, you got it. I couldn't figure out how to do another, and then I found that picture of a bunch of people. Love so, love one another. Yeah. So, look at this. I love others. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And Jesus loves you. I couldn't figure out how to do me. So, we could put Jesus loves you. And then Jesus tells us to love one another. Y'all did a great job with that story. So Jesus says, God loved the world so much that he sent me, and I love God so much, I did what he wanted me to do. And then Jesus says, I want you to love one another. So after we have our prayer, I have something for you. I have one of those picture stories that if you want to take it home, if you know how to read, the pictures will help you. If you don't know how to read, you can get your mom or daddy or big sister or big brother to help you. But you see it has the pictures. Yeah, yeah isn't that neat? So well, let's have a prayer together. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus to be our Savior. And thank you for letting us know that you love us and help us to love other people with the love of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Hattie B. Do y'all want one of these stories? You want one? You want one? You want one? Here, here you go. John Ward, you want one? It's a story with pictures. Oh, yeah.
Father, to share your love more. Shower us with holy manna, Lord. Shower us from above with. Gather here to sing Hosanna with. Gather to share Please pray with me our prayer for illumination as we get ready to hear God's word today. Let us pray. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded to love one another as you have loved us in Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Our epistle lesson is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because we first, he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The, com the commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters. Our next hymn is number 774. There is now a new creation. Thank you. 
Please be seated. The gospel lesson is from the 15th chapter of John. If you're following along in your pew Bible, you might notice that it sort of starts right in the middle of a paragraph. These are the lectionary verses for today. Lectionary is a um, guided system of verses to, for preaching. And this, this takes place the night before Jesus dies when he's talking to his disciples and he, he gives them a new commandment. I invite you to listen for God's word. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Famous last words. In the comics, you'll see famous last words such as these etched on tombstones. Watch this. Of course I know what I'm doing. How hard could it be? I told you I was sick. We're not surprised that some comedians' famous last words are funny. When Bob Hope was dying, his beloved wife, Dolores, asked him where he wanted to be buried. His response, surprise me. Groucho Marx's famous last words were, die, my dear, while well, that's the last thing I'll do. Of course, earlier in life, Groucho also said, I'm going to live forever or die trying. George Washington is reputed to have said, tis well. Blues singer Betty Smith died after saying, I'm going, but I'm going in the name of the Lord. Confederate General Thomas Stonewall Jackson was mistakenly shot by his own troops near Chancellorsville, Virginia on May 2nd, 1863. His left arm had to be amputated. After suffering for days, he died on May 10th. Just before he died, it is said that he became very agitated and started shouting out battle orders. But then he stopped, calmed down, and a smile came to his face. And his famous last words were, let us cross over the river and rest under the shade of the tree. In 1867, U.S. Secretary of State William Seward signed a treaty with Russia to buy what we know as Alaska for $7 million dollars about two cents per acre. The deal was ridiculed as Seward's folly, Seward's icebox, and President Andrew Johnson's polar bear garden. As Secretary Seward lay dying on October 10th, 1872, he was asked if he had any last words. And he replied, nothing, only love one another. The last words of the former Beatle George Harrison who died of cancer in 2001 were love one another. Then there's the story from St. Jerome's biblical commentary on Paul's letter to the Galatians. Jerome was a fourth century theologian and historian. He's best remembered probably for his translation of most of the Bible into Latin, 
which came to be known as the Vulgate and was the common Bible for many, many centuries. This is what Galatians 6.10 says, So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. In his commentary on that verse, Jerome tells a story about John the Evangelist, the beloved disciple of Jesus, who was thought to be the author of the gospel, bearing his name as well as 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And here's the story in Jerome's words. The blessed John the Evangelist lived in Ephesus until extreme old age. His disciples could barely carry him to church, and he could not muster the voice to speak many words. During individual gatherings, he usually said nothing but little children love one another. The disciples and brothers in attendance, annoyed because they always heard the same words, finally said, Teacher, why do you always say this? And John replied a line worthy of John, because it is the Lord's commandment, and if it alone is kept, it is sufficient. Last night, I got my sermon out to proofread it and to go over it and to refresh my mind. And I can't remember if it was, I think it was right before that, I looked at Facebook and I saw this meme that somebody had posted. Maybe you've seen it. It's a picture, a painting, I guess. Somebody's rendition of Jesus looks like Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus is standing there and there are all these people standing around him. And at the top, it says, is Jesus talking? <laughs> it says, a new command I give you, love one another. In the middle, I assume it's all the people talking, they ask, but what if they don't agree with us on a disputable matter that we think should be an essential doctrine? And at the bottom, Jesus says, let's try this one more time. Of course, the most famous, famous last words are what Jesus said when he hung on the cross. Taken from the four Gospels, there are seven statements. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. To Mary, woman, this is your son. To John, this is your mother. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I'm thirsty. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But there's another collection of famous last words of Jesus, although technically they are not his last, last words. Tradition says that the author of the Gospel of John also wrote the Revelation, in which you read this doxology in chapter 5. Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Worthy is the Lamb. My friend, my college classmate, my seminary classmate, Dr. Francis Taylor Ginch is a professor of New Testament at Union Presbyterian Seminary in Richmond. She's written exclusively on John's, uh, extensively on John's, Jesus' words in the Gospel of John. And here's how she introduced an article about today's gospel lesson, sort of playing off that doxology, worthy is the lamb. She says, recently I heard someone describe Jesus in John this way, wordy is the lamb. And it's not a bad description, she writes, for the Jesus in John is given to extended discourse, nowhere more so than in his farewell conversations with his disciples on the night before his death. And excerpts from those extraordinary conversations are set on the church's calendar for preaching and for reflection throughout the season of Easter, which we're still in. She says, because they prepare disciples of every age for life after Easter and for a ministry in the world that is the continuation of Jesus' own ministry. So since the Gospels tell us that all of Jesus' disciples deserted him and ran away when he was arrested and crucified, I suppose we can rightly call what Jesus tells them the night before as his famous last words to them. On that faithful night, Jesus began washing his disciples' feet and telling them, so 
If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And you can easily substitute the word love and get at the heart of what he says later on to his disciples. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have loved you, you also ought to love one another. After he washed their feet, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He then promised his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit. He talked about being the true vine and the disciples being the branches that need to bear much fruit. He warned them about the world's hatred of them because of him, which stands in stark contrast to his command to love one another. He instructed them about the work of the Holy Spirit that would help them continue to do his work after he was gone. He promised them peace. He prayed for them. He prayed for the world. He prayed for you and me. Did you know that? That he prayed for you and me on the night before he died because he said, Father, I ask not only on behalf of these, meaning the disciples, but on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. And in the midst of all of his wordiness in those chapters, he says, this is my commandment, that you love one another. And here's how Jesus' last words are rendered in the message. I've loved you the way my Father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my Father's commands and made myself at home in his love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do what I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master's thinking and planning. No, I've called you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. But remember the root command, love one another. Jesus says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Well, what are they? What are his commandments? And he tells us very plainly a couple of verses later, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So how are we supposed to do that? Aside from talking about laying down your life for your friends, Jesus doesn't give us any specifics, at least not in his last words to his disciples. Maybe Jesus was counting on his disciples to act on what they had seen Jesus himself doing throughout his ministry, to love people the way they had seen Jesus love people, not in word only, but in deed and in action. So one good way to understand Scripture is to look at other Scripture lessons and see what they have to say. So do you remember what Jesus said when he was asked, which commandment is the first of all? Which one is more important than everything else? And Jesus said, well, the first one is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. The second, he said, is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I paired John 15 with 1 John 4 today because 1 John 4 reflects John 15 so well. The Apostle John wrote, we love because God first loved us. Those who say, well, I love God, but hate their brothers and sisters, they're liars. Because those who do not love a brother or sister whom you can actually see, there they are, cannot love God whom they have never seen. The commandment we have from him is this, that you must love God and your brothers and sisters. So you might be wondering, can you be more specific? What are we supposed to do? Well, how about this from the Apostle Paul when he writes about being free in Christ? Wow, that sounds great. You're free in Christ. 
You're free to do whatever you want to do. Paul says, I, you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. What a paradox. You're free to become servants of other people. And he says, the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Or how about these words from Romans 12? Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing zeal and honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. And then there are these famous words about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. So maybe Jesus doesn't give us a whole lot of particular guidelines about how to love one another because he knows we will have to figure that out in our own situation. And it is really hard. So don't think I'm naive in preaching this sermon this morning. Because I know the struggle of loving my neighbor as I love myself. But I also know that Jesus didn't just speak famous last words. He lived them out. And he showed us what it means to love God and to love your neighbor. I don't know how famous these next last words are in general, but they became pretty famous at the Montreat Youth Conference last August, and I talked about them when we came back. The preacher for the week was the Reverend Bruce Reyes Chow, and he ended each night's sermon with the same benediction. And it didn't take long before he would begin that benediction, and it kind of became a call and response and if you're struggling with what it means to love one another, think on Jesus' famous last words as you hear these not quite as famous last words. Go forth into the world with compassion and justice in your heart. Give strength to the weak. Give voice to the silent. See one another. Hear one another. Care for one another and love one another, it's all that easy, and it's all that hard. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Great and loving God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all else, we might be able to love one another. Keep us steadfast in love and faithful to your word through Jesus Christ who loved us to the end and loves us still. Amen. We have a number of joys today and some concerns. Uh, in just a minute, we will share a joy as we receive Garrett and Patsy Ludlam and John Ludlam as members of our congregation. Also want to share with you the good news that Kevin Brinkley, the son of our church secretary, Cheryl, received his MBA from UNCW on Friday, and they had a great celebration and that Haley Knowles, who is an affiliate member of our church, will graduate from Fayetteville State University next Saturday. And as you see in the bulletin, um, 
congratulations to Jack Holly's family on his well-deserved induction into the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame on Friday. And Christy Johnson led our opening devotion this morning and opening assembly, and she was there Friday night, and she put it very well. She said, well-deserved. Not only was he a great coach, but more than that, he was a great person. And so we rejoice with Jack's family. We want to express our sympathy to Roger Coombs and his family on the death of his uncle Forrest Cavanaugh on May 2nd. And to pray for Joel Coleman as he continues with treatments following a melanoma surgery. And for David Sanderson, who has a broken arm and is anticipating back surgery this summer. So let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for your love for us in Jesus Christ. We hear his command to love one another as he has loved us. And at first we, we throw up our hands and say, how can we do that? But he has shown us how to do that. And he calls us to do that. And he empowers us to do that. And Lord, we pray that you would help us love one another as Jesus has loved you and as you have loved him. Lord, we rejoice together as the Bible tells us when one member rejoices, we all rejoice together. So we rejoice with Kevin. We give you thanks for his accomplishments at UNCW. And we rejoice with Cheryl as she celebrates her son's accomplishments. And we pray for Haley and for all other graduates as they reach this milestone. And we lift up Diane and Robert and thank you for them seeing her through to this graduation celebration. And Lord, we thank you for the life and ministry of Jack Holly in this church and in this community and in other communities. All the lives that he touched through the years of coaches and the young men that he coached. We thank you for his steadfastness and for his skill and for his compassion and love for the students that he worked with. And we rejoice with his family on a well-deserved recognition in the Hall of Fame. Lord, the scriptures tell us when one member suffers, we all suffer together. So we pray that we would have hearts of compassion to lift up the needs of people we know and to reach out in love. We pray for Roger and for his family as they mourn the death of Forrest. And we pray for Forrest's good friends in this community and in other places. We thank you for his good and gracious life, his friendship to so many people, his winsome ways. And we pray for his family in this time of grief. Lord, we lift up Joel and Frankie as he continues treatments and pray for um, comfort of spirit and strength of body. And we pray for David as he recovers from this broken arm and as he anticipates this back surgery this summer that it may bring him some relief from his pain. Lord, be with us as we vote on Tuesday and as people across the nation in different places go to the polls to vote on primaries. We thank you for that privilege. We pray that we would take our responsibility seriously as citizens. And we thank you for the freedoms we have. Help us to work to support them and to enjoy them and to guarantee them for all people. We thank you that you are our God and that you love us so much you sent us your Son, in whose name we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Garrett and Patsy Ludlam and John Ludlam to come forward, and Elder Clay Blue is going to represent the session.
on behalf of the session, I present Garrett, Patsy, and John Ludlam, who have been received into the membership of this congregation by transfer from Warsaw Presbyterian Church in Warsaw, North Carolina. Garrett, Patsy, and John, you come to us as members of the one holy Catholic Church into which you were baptized and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in the family of God, and we rejoice in the gifts that you bring to us. As you join with us, we welcome you to this congregation, to its life, its worship, and its ministry, and pray that you will be blessed and nurtured in your time here with us. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number Garrett, Patsy, and John, brothers and a sister in the faith. Together may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the same mind of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we give all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. I'm glad to have you. Welcome, John. Thanks, Clay. Let's continue our worship as we present our tithes and our offerings. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. Holy Lord, you have perfected love among us by sending your Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We gratefully acknowledge your gift is an overwhelming grace in our lives. We share these tithes and offerings today with hope that your children everywhere will come to know in their lives that your perfect love casts out all fears. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we give you thanks. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 382. forth into the world with compassion and justice in your heart. Give strength to the weak. Give voice to the silent. See one another. Hear one another. Care for one another. Love one another. It's all that easy and it's all that hard. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Amen.